We continue to preview the 2024 college football season. Our stop today is Dillon, Montana, and it is a privilege to get to visit with Ryan Norris, who is the head football coach for the Montana Western Bulldogs. Coach, another season ahead of you right now. I know spring football in the books, and it was a bit chilly up there, but the way I hear it, it's a bit chilly during the spring regularly. Yeah, it is. It was actually a, a really um, productive spring for us this year in terms of weather. It was chilly, but it, it wasn't wet. So um, we only had to, to cancel um, one practice because of snow. That um, can be the issue for us up here because uh, we, we don't have turf. We're finally getting turf this uh, this summer, but uh so it does make it a little bit challenging. You know, once you plow grass, it becomes mud. So, um, so yes, we had a great spring. Uh, yeah. Excellent competition. You know, morale is, is high and, and uh, we were, we were, it was really productive and, and the weather did cooperate maybe outside of uh, a few chilly days. Uh, well, I understand that. And, and uh, in, in this part of the country, chilly days in the spring, they're not bad. Uh, we no. appreciate those. That, that's all right. I signed 24 for your recruiting class for 2024. So I suppose that's a good number and took care of needs on both sides of the ball. Talk about the recruits. Yeah. You know, we feel like we did a good job in, in recruiting and, and uh, you know, we, we got some guys that we think are going to be really strong players for us in the future. I really believe the area we, we're strongest at in terms of our recruiting this year was our, our offensive line. We got three guys who in the past, I, I don't know with their, um, their size and their talent that we would have been able to get them. So um, Bryant Kelly at a Highland high school in Pocatello, Idaho, perennial powerhouse, a state champion again um, this year, you know, a six to 305 pound, guy who could who could move and then um jose alvarez out of washougal another great small school program out in 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 washington you know a a 6-4 guy who's you know been in the top three in the state of washington and wrestling you know since his sophomore year you know another 285 pound guy who's going to be you know bigger and moves really great and and then uh jacob punavai out of kahuku over in Hawaii, um, just uh, another another road grader from Kahuku for for the Bulldogs. You know, just again, and all these guys are high academic guys, big size, um, football intelligence. So that that crew was um, was excellent. Um, you know, then Montana guys. You know, gosh, we got some good wide receivers this year out of the state of Montana. Colter Ramos, a six-one guy at a Big Sky High School in Missoula, um, and then uh, Hunter Stewart, a six-two guy at a Hamilton High School. You know, out here in Montana, almost every kid plays both ways. You know, and both were also fantastic defensive backs. So. Uh, you know, really pleased about those guys and, and getting some guys out of, out of Montana who can really play. Got a great running back out of Montana. I was just excited about Aiden Lammers. You know, he broke the single season and single game rushing record in, in the state. Another Class B small school um, guy, a really big back who, you know, we haven't had, didn't really play big backs last year. Just to have a guy coming in, we could develop as a hammer like Reese Neville and Colton McPhee were is something that we could use in our use in our offense. Yeah. And then so and we got some speed guys from out of out of state as well that we think are going to fit in really well. And uh, uh, the Jamal guy um, junior out of the Seattle area, Mateus Senna out of the Seattle area. So, yeah, it was a fun year. You know, we were out getting some guys that we haven't gotten before and um you know i think it's some of it comes with some success and some of it comes with um just to be frank um new facilities you know and uh so we're, we're catching up with the joneses a wee bit down here in dillon well and seriously new facilities make a difference they really do and it's it's across the board uh, yeah and and i think in all sports too so uh no congratulations question. from that perspective coach Last season, you had a couple of underclassmen lead the way for you on the offensive side of the ball. So let's talk offense for just a mo moment. Michael Palandry stepped in. He followed John Jun, who had a great career, and Palandry didn't seem to miss a beat 
at all. And then uh, Midwest Sports Net, we had uh, Eli Norris as one of the top wide receivers returning to his team in the fall. So take us through the offense a bit. Uh, we return everybody. So every starter and almost every backup. So, uh, you know, very young unit last year with this exception was really the strength was our, was our offensive line. Michael and um, Eli were able to do some fantastic things in the past game. And that was due to the offensive line, but we led our league in rushing for the, I believe it's the fifth consecutive year this year, you know, Jake Humphrey and Pete Gibson just won two back to back. Um, it, it was fueled by those guys up front. And we got four seniors this year up front, you know, Keith Kippenhan will be a three-year starter, Marcus Lombard and Rocco uh, Bakari four-year starters for us. And Eli Wells was a transfer from Snow College last year. Um, so, I mean, it'd be his second year starting with us. And then Sione Haimuli, who started for us as a redshirt freshman last year, is back for his sophomore year. And our unsung heroes are tied in, Luke Canijo, the guy. Uh, we don't throw it to our tight end very often. And by very often, I mean almost never. So, and everybody knows that. But but this guy is is a machine, and he's he's old school, and those guys really have made it a go. Um, and I think the guy that didn't get as much credit as do he missed some games in the middle of the season, and but he ended up honorable mention all conference. I thought he should have been second team. He was the third leading receiver in our league. Is Dylan Shipley? I mean, he takes the top off of everything. He's super talented, super fast, dedicated guys so um that was we have a really good crew uh coming back so they they don't cause me to lose much sleep maybe my son but the rest of them i'm on board with no he's he's awesome too so it's it's been a joy to get to coach your own kid and then to watch him have so much success and and help build a really great unit and team well, you know, children are going to do that to you off the field, on the field, doesn't matter. That's what I hear. So, <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. We're visiting with Ryan Norris now, who is the head football coach for the Montana Western Bulldogs. Nine wins last season, uh, most for the program in more than 20 years. And, Coach, you know, I, I appreciate you visiting with us today. 11th season with the program as the football coach in two different stints. You spent some time as the athletic director as well. On defense, there are some players who uh, may fill a little bit more role than they got to last year. Uh, Braden Swank coming back from injury last year. And then uh, linebacker Cole Hogan uh, looking to step into a starting role, full-time starting role this season. Take us through the defense felt really good about where we were moving in our defense coach martolo our, our defense coordinator did really did a fantastic job this year of of you know especially in the spring of finding us a home base you know what is exactly our identity on that side of the ball going to be and then our players did um probably a better job of buying into what it's going to be and and working to to make it theirs you know from the techniques and the skills to to your keys and and just all your initial movements just doing a really nice job there but um yeah Braden Swank I mean he's an all-conference caliber corner and just uh broke a collarbone after the third game at practice so losing him was was tough last year on us in the defensive backfield played almost all freshmen and a sophomore back there last year uh, with all those guys back, plus all the new guys coming in to compete as well. So um, highly competitive in that area right now. I think Cole Hogan's going to have a breakout year, just a fantastic football player. You know, he transferred in last year from Snow Junior College and, um, you know, he played starter reps in that, but we had a good rotation going in there. Um, but he really stepped up as a, as a leader and showed he can really have high level production as well. Um, transfer Jace Fitzgerald from Montana state university, a hometown Dylan product um, stepped right in and earned uh, a spot as well at linebackers. So we feel really good there. And, and Keegan Mufish has been a guy who's been a stalwart on our special teams and a part-time starter on, 
on defense, steps right into a middle linebacker role. So feel really strong at linebacker. And then a couple of juniors, Kenai Liua, played tons of meaningful snaps and at uh, defensive and defensive tackle last two years. And then Tyler Walker, another junior, at, did the same thing for us the last couple of years. And as juniors this year, those guys, as opportunity to step up and to expand their role expand their leadership role, expand their production role, uh, watching them do that in the off season and, and through the spring has, um, was awesome. So I feel very confident in, in our defense. And I think we're going to see a, a better defensive unit than we saw overall last year. Well, it, was a, it was a pretty good unit. I mean, the results were there, obviously, though, over the course of the season. So that has to be encouraging for Bulldogs fans, uh, definitely, and, and for you as well. You talked about Pete Gibson a little bit earlier, and I'd like to go back to that, too. He'll be wearing number 18 for you this year. A senior, a Dylan native on top of that, and, and uh, just a fantastic athlete. But tell us what it means to wear number 18 for Montana Western. So number 18 is, is, a, is a legacy number dedicated to uh, MJ Simpkins. MJ was uh, a Beaverhead County High School uh, product, outstanding human being, excellent football player who, who died tragically. Um, and so, yeah, we, his brother, Nate, uh, younger brother, Simpkins also played for us. He was an all American and, um, still holds several of our wide receiver records here. And we wanted to honor, you know, MJ and, and just really that legacy. MJ was a guy who was a bulldog through and through, you know, every thing that he did was, you know, was a core value of what, how we operate in, in our program. And, you know, we started that after Nate got finished wearing his brother's number 18. And uh, so that player gets to choose whoever they see is the guy who is emblematic of all the things that it means is to be a bulldog and the values that we have. And uh, Pete Gibson, I, I kind of felt like that Cameron Rouser was going to pick Pete, you know, Pete came in as a maybe too small, not fast enough running back, got himself on special teams. So worked himself into one of the better backs in, in the frontier conference by his junior year. And as a real stalwart in our program, you know, he's just, he is proof that that hard work and dedication and loyalty will get you where you desire to, to go. I played with Pete's dad here. I played with Pete's uncle here. He's my neighbor. Uh, you know, his, uh, his mom was one of our, um, athletic training students. I mean, so it's a, um, yeah, it was a really proud moment for me and a proud moment for Dylan, for, for Pete to be selected as the next 18. That's, that's fantastic. I love that story coach. And I, and I love getting to hear about that and, and getting to, not only continue legacies, but do it in an honorable way like that. And it's just, it's so fantastic. Well, your season, which is, uh, you know, a few months off at the moment, but it's going to yeah. be before we know it, bookended with competition against Eastern Oregon. You get them at home, uh, first week of the season, Saturday, September 7th. And that will be an out of conference matchup, making yeah. sure that you get one more game on the, on the list. Of course, it'll be a conference game when you play them there in the final game of the season. Then your first Frontier Conference game is against College of Idaho at home as well the very next weekend. So it doesn't really start off easy for you. No, and, and frankly, I prefer it that way. I, I love Tim Camp and the program they run at Eastern Oregon. We have had so many crazy games against each other. So I, uh, um, I, that is one of the opponents that I, I really always have joy in, in playing. Our kids are very similar. And um, you could count on Coach Camp to be his dues to be bringing it. So it really does let you know exactly where you're at uh, game one. And then how much more fun could it be than to open up with College of Idaho and us for that first conference uh, game? We've they've they've been getting the better of us, but they've been just great, exciting football games over the last four years. And, and uh, again, another team that really look forward to preparing to um good players good coaches um 
historically says some crazy stuff's going to go down in that game and one is going to go down the wire and be awesome. So, I mean, yeah, what a fun, what a fun day in September that one's going to be. So, but before we leave, I got to talk about my specialists. We've oh, got yes. John Mears coming back, two-time academic All-American, first-team All-Conference last year um, at, at Kicker. Been a three-year starter. This would be his fourth year. He's pretty close to, if he has an incredible year, to be breaking some incredible records. Uh, great guy, trustworthy. So excited for him. Uh, guy we can rely on. And then our punter. And our kickoff guy, you know, our punter, this will be his third consecutive season for us punting. You know, Eddie Dewart, you know, he's been about a yard, a half yard off of an all-conference, almost all-American opportunity for, for him. So really excited about his opportunity. And then our kickoff guy, another guy who's going to be a junior, uh, Angel Navaretti. So we have a great group of um we just have a great group of specialists and uh, just always want to mention those guys. We signed another Washougal guy, Kobe Johnson, who I think uh, is going to be absolutely incredible. He might handle all the duties someday for, for the Bulldogs. So we're, we're feeling really good about our special teams units as well. And those guys are so, they work so diligently and, you know, they do everything that everybody else does, but um, yeah, they, they only get the credit once in a while when they do pretty good. And if they don't, everybody, you know, gets to see them. It's kind of like wrestling. Um, so <laughs> it's your fault and it's your fault. So um, <laughs> I love those guys and, and just wanted to give those guys a, a shout out and, and how important they are to our success. Well, I'm, I'm going to humbly ask them to forgive me uh, for, for skipping through. I, I had, I had <laughs> 18 on my mind. And I just went right through that. So uh, for well, 18 is a good one to have on the mind too. That one yeah. always chokes me up. Specialists, uh, forgive me there for, for you all. And we will continue to follow the Bulldogs. Now, Coach, uh, again, looking forward to the season. And, and as you talked about, uh, some fun things to talk about early on. And we'll yes. definitely be watching the Frontier Conference and, and watching the Bulldogs this season. Coach Ryan Norse in his 11th season, coming into the 11th season as the coach for the Montana Western Bulldogs. Success to you all and to the Bulldogs this year. We will follow along, and I really appreciate, I've enjoyed learning about UMW visiting with you today. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you, Joe. We appreciate it.